Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member McGovern. I urge the Rules Committee to grant a prompt rule for the House's consideration of two bills, each of which strikes down a law adopted by the D.C. Council. One of the bills is my House Joint Resolution 24, disapproving of the District of Columbia's Local Resident Voting Rights Amendment Act of 2022. The other bill is Representative Clyde's House Joint Resolution 26, disapproving of D.C.'s Revised Criminal Code Act of 2022. Our nation's capital city is in crisis. Crime is rampant. Students in D.C. public schools suffered historic learning loss because Democrats kept schools closed. Buildings are sitting empty while federal workers continue to work from home. We talked about that last week. But the D.C. Council has chosen to prioritize legislation that will make things worse. This includes a bill, the Local Resident Voting Rights Act Amendment of 2022, to allow non-citizens, including illegal immigrants and foreign employees at embassies openly hostile to the United States, to vote in local elections. This move by the D.C. Council dilutes the votes of American citizens, including the many residents of the district who struggled and sacrificed to obtain legal citizenship. Voting is a pillar of American democracy and a constitutional right that must be protected and preserved for citizens of our country. Voting is how Americans exert their will upon the government. Voting ultimately determines how laws are written and enforced so that citizens can shape the rules under which they can earn a living and be protected from harm. Voting is an essential privilege and responsibility established at great cross throughout our nation's history. Yet on November 21st, 2022, the D.C. Council chose to grant the vote to anyone residing in the district, including those here illegally and other non-citizens. Now just think about the immediate implications of this law. Our nation's capital city plays host to hundreds of foreign organizations and embassies. Many of these foreign nationals have interests directly opposed to those of the United States. They make no claim otherwise. D.C.'s laws make zero exceptions for such individuals whose role may be to disrupt or destroy the American way of life and principles our nation stands upon. For years, my Democrat colleagues have decried potential foreign influence in our electoral process. But D.C.'s new law potentially allows foreign agents from China, Russia, and other adversaries to participate in local elections held within this nation's capital city. This law is so bad, the D.C. Council even lost the support of the Washington Post editorial board. In October of last year, the Post estimated 50,000 non-citizen D.C. residents would be able to vote under this act, which it viewed as a bridge too far. I think most of us can agree with that. I think most of the American people would agree with that. Even D.C. Mayor Bowser agrees with us and chose to withhold her own signature from this legislation. While the bill was ultimately enacted without her support, it is shocking that even the progressive Democrat mayor of D.C. does not support the actions of the out-of-control D.C. Council. Our free and fair elections are the hallmark of a healthy democracy, and we must protect them. The D.C. Council's law intends to do the opposite. For these reasons, I urge you to support my resolution of disapproval to stop this radical reform in its tracks. Secondly, and as if this was not bad enough, the radical D.C. Council has also enacted legislation that will turn this crime crisis into a catastrophe by passing the Revised Criminal Code Act of 2022. Let's be clear. The capital city, America's city, is in a crisis. According to the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, carjackings in the district have increased by 76% compared to this time last year. Total property crime is up 24%. Homicides are up 17%. In fact, D.C. is currently on track to have the most homicides since 1995. But the radical D.C. Council has enacted legislation that will turn this crime crisis into a catastrophe. The D.C. Council's progressive soft-on-crime legislation eliminates almost all the mandatory minimum sentencing requirements for violent crimes. And it drastically reduces the maximum penalties allowable to the courts. These changes further embolden criminals to run rampant throughout the District of Columbia. The act also grants a right to jury trial for most misdemeanor offenses. The D.C. court system is already overloaded. This change will burden the D.C. court system even more, reducing the resources devoted to hearing cases for serious felony offenses. The D.C. Council's legislation is eroding individuals' right to a fair and speedy trial granted to them through our Constitution. All Americans should feel safe in their capital city, but they don't because of D.C. Democrats' leniency towards criminals at the expense of American safety. 
Ensuring public safety and addressing crime is a cornerstone of the House Republicans' policy agenda. In November last year, Americans voted for a new majority in the House, a new majority that will address crime head on to ensure a nation that's safe. This DC Council legislation is a brazen rejection of law and order, ignoring the high rates of criminality in the district and doubling down on leniency for society's violent criminals is a dereliction of duty. If the DC Council wants to continue to skirt its responsibility to the people, they will have to answer to this Congress. It should be noted that we in Congress are not alone. The DC Police Union, representing 3,500 members, and the National Fraternal Order of Police are strongly in favor of House Joint Resolution 26, stating in a recent letter to Congress that the DC Act will, quote, will embolden criminals, dramatically increase crime and violence, and render police officers in the District of Columbia virtually powerless to adequately police the city and keep its residents and visitors safe. Additionally, on January 4th, DC Mayor Bowser took the extraordinary step of vetoing this legislation, calling the proposals, quote, controversial, and stating the act, quote, does not make the district safer. Mayor Bowser's bold executive veto sent a strong message that the policy proposals of this bill are simply unworkable and unsafe for the district. There may not be much Mayor Bowser and I have agreed on in the past, but today we are on the same page. I call on all of my colleagues to join me in supporting Mr. Clyde's resolution of disapproving the DC Revised Criminal Code Act of 2022. We must ensure these terrible criminal code reforms are not put into place. Again, I ask the Rules Committee to grant a prompt rule for the House's consideration of these resolutions, and I welcome the committee's questions. Thank you very much, Mr.